Belita, arguably the most controversial film of the decade. Jeremy Irons stars as Humbert, while newcomer Dominique Swain takes on the part of Lolita. Melanie Griffith and Frank Langella have supporting roles as, respectively, Lolita's unhinged mother and Quilty, a mysterious figure who pops up periodically throughout the film. By now, the storyline of Lolita is as well known as the controversy surrounding it. Humbert, a man in his 40s, falls in love with Lolita, a 14-year-old girl, and, needless to say, much trouble ensues. Along the way, Humbert ends up married to Lolita's mother, a coupling he agrees to only because he wants to keep seeing Lolita. Lolita was originally slated for release last year, but because of a law passed a few years ago in the States regarding pedophilia, it was unable to secure an American distributor. I'm uncertain of what the situation was here in Canada, but the film finally premiered on the American Pay Channel Showtime last month, and is slowly receiving a theatrical release. Yes, the subject matter can be considered offensive. But the director, Adrian Lyne, has filmed the material in such a way that one would have to be awfully sensitive to be offended by anything in the movie. The scenes of intimacy between Humbert and Lolita are done in shadows and in a manner that generally keeps their affection private. It seems as though people were getting so upset about this film because of the premise, but I doubt those same people bothered to see the film. The delicacy with which the subject has been handled is clearly the most surprising element within Lolita. Jeremy Irons portrays Humbert as possibly the most likable pedophile in movie history, while Dominique Swain perfectly captures the childish innocence of Lolita. In her portrayal, Lolita is a girl who is initially unaware of Humbert's wistful and often lascivious gazes, but eventually comes to realize that she can use his lust to get what she needs. Her attempts at acting how she perceives a woman would behave are awkward and clumsy, just as one would expect from an inexperienced little girl. Their romance is actually quite charming for a time, until things start to get out of hand. And not that a pedophile deserves any sympathy, but we're actually given a reason for Humbert's nature during a prologue right at the start of the film. When he was 14, he fell in love with a girl his age, and shared his first sexual experience with her. She died a few months later of a disease, and though it's not explicitly stated, we are meant to assume that's why Humbert developed into a pederast, to somehow reclaim the innocence and pleasure that he associated with that first real love. I've not read the original Nabokov novel, so I can't say whether or not this precursor to the story was implemented by the filmmakers as a way of making the audience feel more comfortable with Humbert. At any rate, it does explain quite a lot about him. The only real miscalculation within the film is a scene of extreme violence in the third act that seems wholly out of place. It didn't really fit in with the rest of the movie, and I found it more offensive than the love affair between Lolita and Humbert. I've heard, though, that that same scene is just as gory in the novel, but perhaps a line needs to be drawn at what should be adapted for the screen and what shouldn't. For example, I am sure the love scenes between Lolita and Humbert were quite graphic in the book, but, obviously, the filmmakers chose to omit that from the film. So why stain the picture with a scene that would be more at home in a Paul Verhoeven flick? Anyway, that is a very minor quibble. Lolita is a tragedy, an incredibly disturbing tale of tragic events. Make no mistake, this is no romance, this is a despicable crime story. Now, I must confess that I have not read the novel nor have I seen the 1962 Cupboard classic, so I'll be judging this film on its own without comparison. That being said, this is a great film. This is an intriguing yet extremely disturbing crime tale that's both well-written and expertly performed by this ultra-talented cast. I only have good things to say about this film. It exceeded my expectations and elicited strong emotion and fury from me. This script does several incredible things that I must commend. First of all, it makes it extraordinarily clear that this is not a pedophilic romance. As the film goes on, it's clear that Humbert is a disturbed pedophile and is expected from such a person. He cares about nothing other than his obsession with this young teen girl. A romance must be two individuals in love and sharing a relationship. This is not that. This is an adult man with a sick abusive obsession with his stepdaughter. The script is extremely smart in giving us scenes that depict the extremely abusive harmful situation that Lolita is in with Humbert. Lolita is your average young teen. She's overly and it was never love from her point of view, how could it be? It's absolutely heartbreaking and enraging to watch this film because you see exactly what this sick man does to this girl willingly. It was also very smart to tell this story from Humbert's point of view so we as the audience can see inside this man's sick head. Having this told to us from him makes everything that much more impactful and, to be honest, chilling. There's so much rich material packed into this script and that makes it all that much better. Not only is the disturbed these characters are not one-dimensional in the slightest, we see them as who they really are. A sick pervert taking advantage of a girl and telling himself it's love, a young girl trying to navigate this horrible ordeal she finds herself in, and an unaware mother who falls for this pervert. It was simple to see this was a well-made film because of the genuine anger and heartbreak that it elicited from me. My heart broke for Lolita and for her mother played by Melanie Griffith. So the script is a home run, how about the acting? This cast is full of talent. Jeremy Irons plays Humbert perfectly. Irons brings passion and subtle depravity to this lead role and he's just a perfect fit. Melanie Griffith, while only a supporting character, makes great use of her time and delivers an incredible performance as Lolita's mother Charlotte. 
There is one scene in particular between her and Irons where she demonstrates why she's such a great actress. That is a great scene and Griffith's character said exactly what I was feeling. And of course Dominique Swain, who plays Lolita, is a marvel. Swain played Lolita with such skill, she was able to show innocence and bluntness. There's an impactful scene at the end between her and Irons where she blew me away with her cold blunt delivery of her lines. It was so crucial that she delivered. it showed his perception of their relationship which is sick and disturbing versus hers which was clear and center. Frank Langella must be mentioned too. His performance is so great and his character adds to the overall impact of this story. Langella's character is even more disturbed and sick than Humbert and we see that clearly towards the end. The scene between Irons and Langella is performed so well. Both the actors and the effects people deserve so much applause. What occurs is graphic and I'm glad it is because it fits the tone and disturbing nature of these two men. And that entire scene. The ending is done well too. It serves up justice in a powerful way, which I had been waiting for. A story as sick as this must serve up justice. Lolita is an excellent film that tells us a disturbing crime story through a powerful script and exceptional performances. The ads asked how did they ever make a movie of Lolita for persons over 18 years of age, but did not attempt an answer. The suggestion is planted that the movie had licked the book, and that Lolita, but did not attempt an answer. The suggestion is planted that the movie had licked the book, and that Lolita has been turned into the usual kind of sexy movie. The advertising has been slanted to the mass so the a sizable part of the mass audience doesn't like the movie and the art house audience is missing out on one of the few American films. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.